Hello everybody, this is the second video of Experimental RC. In this week's video, I'm going to be introducing the first concept that I'm going to be looking at. If you watched my uh, last week's video on how to build the foam cup and you're waiting for the second video, it might be a few days late because, well, I was flying my foam cub and I didn't really reinforce the wing as much as I should have and it broke when I was flying, causing the whole thing to spiral down hundreds of feet and land in the middle of a huge puddle. <laughs> and uh, when I tried to rescue it, I ended up just breaking it even more. And the speed controller got fried and uh, my servos are still drying out, so there might be a bit of a delay on that. Anyways, the first concept that I'm going to be looking at here is uh, annular wings. So here's a picture of an airplane with an annular wing. And uh, if you've looked at my website or my other videos, you'll see this picture a lot. And I just really like this picture. It really demonstrates the concept of an annular wing well. However, annular wings don't have to be perfect circles. They can be oval shaped and uh, they can be offset so the top half is closer to the front than the bottom half or they could even be hexagonal in shape. And I have previously built annular wing airplanes just for my personal entertainment. So here's the first plane with an annular wing I built. As you can see it has uh, more of an oval shaped wing and it flew really well. It flew uh, at a really high angle of attack and it uh, rolled around a lot, but it was fun to fly. This is the second annular wing plane I built and as you can see it has a hexagonal shape. It didn't fly too well because the hexagonal wing added too much weight and made it uh, too unstable to fly. This is the third plane with an annular wing I built and as you can see it really just hovers around. It didn't fly too too nicely. So I'll start by talking about the theoretical benefits of annular wings. Now you may not realize it, but the airplanes you see flying around, whether they're Cessnas or Boeings, create huge vortexes that trail off the wingtips, and uh, they greatly reduce an airplane's efficiency, causing them to use more fuel. To Here's a picture produced by a NASA study on wingtip vortices. And as you can see, there's a huge vortex outlined by the smoke that is uh, formed right off the wingtip of this airplane. And it forms because uneven pressure on either side of the wing causes air to spill over the wingtip and trail back into a vortex. So as you can imagine, wingtip vortices account for a large amount of an aircraft's drag during flight. And the idea is that if you put an annular wing on an airplane, it wouldn't have wingtips, so wingtip vortices couldn't form. This is all shown by a bunch of fancy equations called span efficiency factor. If you really want to look at that, you can just Google span efficiency. Now the interesting thing is that even though we have all this math and theory to show that annular wings are more efficient than straight wings, there's no experimental evidence that I could find at least to show this. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to be working on building an airplane with an annular wing. And uh, I'll kind of go through the build procedure with you and I'll put PDF plans when I get it done. I'll also be looking more into annular wings and doing some smoke wind tunnel testing and some things like measuring drag in the wind tunnel. So don't forget to subscribe and uh, check back soon and also check out my website rcexperimental.com. Thanks for watching.